And um, before we start today, I just want to acknowledge the traditional owners in the land of which we are meeting. I pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and the original uh, Aboriginal elders of the communities who may be here today. Um, as you can see, sharing the screen, my name is Robert Powell. I'm from My Integra. Uh, with me today, I've got Jack Kelly and Lisa Stone from Sporting Wheelies up in Queensland. Thank you very much, guys, for joining us today. I'm going to do a very quick introduction and a bit of a welcome and some housekeeping, and then I will hand over to the guys to do their presentation. Uh, so I will be driving the slides. Uh, here we go. So before the session, uh, you may notice that your mics and your cameras are turned off. Uh, that's because we obviously just want, uh, we don't want multiple sounds going on in the background, particularly when you have these meetings with lots of people. Um, however, we do want your questions very much. Please use the chat function to be able to type your questions in. We'll allocate some time at the end of the presentation for any questions that do come in. And likewise, if we don't manage to get through all of the questions, we will publish, uh, we will keep track of all of them and publish a written response to all of the questions as part of the follow-up uh, items that we do. Um, and then after the session, you'll receive a survey, a link to this recording of the webinar, if you know anybody that may find it useful as well, and a bit of a summary document, including some kind of high level talking points and the questions that I mentioned as well. So um, just before we start, just a bit about my Integra. We are a national registered provider of uh, plan management and support coordination. Um, we put your needs first to be able to do the best NDIS experience possible and to ensure that we're providing the best service for the participants that we work with, as well as people like yourselves who are working with participants as well. Uh, we very much recognise that it's a, a partnership that we're working with together and able to provide the best experience for all people that we um, come into contact with. Uh, I just wanted to point out a very quick thing with my Integra that um, I don't think many people are aware of, but um, two very quick things. One, that we have a dedicated phone line for support coordinators, so that specifically routes through to our most experienced customer service staff. Um, so I always describe that as a really good, useful tool if you have um let's say one of those really meaty gray area questions that you may not have uh it is sure what the answer is or you may really need us to work with you on a particular issue it's a really good resource to use for that and then the other thing i just wanted to point out is that we have the text message support as well um something that you may not have heard of as well so if you're out on the go um, often people are traveling or just want to be able to get a quick answer to something, then you're able to do that through the tech support as well. Um, so great to have just that SMS feature. Um, I guess the overarching message there is that we have multiple different ways for you to get into contact with us. So whichever is best for you, um, please make the most of that and we'll be happy to kind of help you out along that way. Okie doke. So today's speakers, I said we've got Jack Kelly and Lisa Stone from Sporting Wheelies, both very experienced in uh, the work that they're doing up in Queensland. I'll kind of leave this here as a slide for you to be able to kind of pick through the main highlights. I'm sure they don't want me uh, talking endlessly about all the major achievements that they've done, but nevertheless, we want to give the message that they are very experienced and um, very knowledgeable in what they're talking about today. So we really do encourage your questions and thoughts in terms of um, ideas that they may be able to contribute to as well in relation to the topic that we're talking about today. Um, so. I may just hand over at this point to Lisa and Jack to do the presentation. Um, please keep questions coming in the chat. We'll address those as we go. I will turn my camera off for now, and then I'll jump back on at the end when we start doing some questions. Okay, guys, I will hand over to you. Great, thank you very much for that introduction, Rob. Um, so my name's Lisa Stone, I work for Sporting Wheelies. Um, so to give you an idea of this presentation, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, who Sporting Wheelies is, but also talk about uh, sport and how we can encourage um, people with a disability to become more active um, and involved in sport and community activities. So to give you some background on who Sporting Wheelies are, uh, we're a not-for-profit um, and our aim is really to help people become fit and active. Um, so we focus on uh, really from sort of inclusive sports, recreation 
and also rehabilitation therapy. So that whole sort of gamut from therapy, uh, introducing people to sport, introducing them to community activities. Um, but then we also the um, state sporting organisation for five different Paralympic sports. So wheelchair basketball, wheelchair rugby, uh, boccia, goalball, and also para powerlifting. Uh, we are Queensland based. And I know a few of you are, uh, a lot of you are not in Queensland, but the information that we'll be talking about today really will go across sort of all, um, you know, across Australia and will be um, relevant across Australia. Uh, Rob, can we do the next slide? Thanks. Um, so our purpose here is really to help create opportunities for people with a disability. So it's from sort of um, state-of-the-art rehabilitation. So, for example, the photo there is of a program that we call NeuroMoves, which is all about really intensive therapy um, to really help people regain as much function as possible. So we're really focusing on, you know, helping people create opportunities in a functional and an active sense um, to really improve their life. Um, but we also talk, uh, do a lot of community sports and as I mentioned before, uh, people can then join them. And if they want to, we've got pathways for people to represent Australia at the, para, at the Paralympics. A big part of our focus is about building communities too. Um, and sport brings people together through those communities, um, not only through uh, physical activity, but obviously through things, you know, um, mental uh uh, community, um, interacting with other people, and all of those social benefits. So some of the benefits of sport there, which I alluded to, are things like obviously improved physical health. Um, part of that physical health is in improvements in functionality. So trying to, you know, we work with a broad range of different disabilities. Um, our name is probably a bit of a misnomer there that while we call sporting wheelies, we actually look after, at the moment, more than 65 different types of disability. So it's not only people in a wheelchair. Uh, for example, it's um, people with a vision impairment play goalball, um, but we deal with a whole range of different um, disabilities. And our aim is to help those people to be um, as physically well as possible. So really improving functionality through our rehabilitation, but also using sport as a really powerful tool uh, to increase people's functionality and to really act as a therapy to help people be you know, as fit and physically strong as possible. Sport is so much more than that. So if we can just go back to the last the slide before, Rob, sorry. Uh, but it's also about yeah, increasing or improving mental health, um, largely through connecting with other people, increased social interaction, uh, inclusion, um, being part of a wider group of people that are like them, um, and also in looking at opportunities for skill development, which will obviously overall, all of those things really lead to you know, improving people's quality of life, um, independence, and that really translates a lot to, you know, daily living and improvement in daily living. Can you go to the next slide? Okay. Um, so the reality is that people with a disability are actually likely to be less physically active um, than other members of the community. Um, and that declines even further um, with more moderate to severe impairments. Um, and the statistic there is, you know, 83% of people with a disability are not sufficiently active for health benefit. So our aim is really to create opportunities for people to participate in sport um, and you know, help to improve their, uh, their health by really creating those opportunities for sports participation. So as a goal for an organisation, our goals are, first of all, it's all about world-class therapy and rehabilitation. So we work with a large group of exercise physiologists we also have a, the NeuroMoves program, which is all about using, you know, evidence-based treatment, industry-leading experts to really work with people with their own individual impairments and looking at how we can improve that and improve their daily functioning. Um, we also look at taking people, you know, from the hospital. Um, we do have certain hospital programs. So taking people from that state of where they're newly injured, um, starting to accept their disability, and then through community programs, uh, health rehabilitation programs, exercise therapy, physiotherapy, hydrotherapy, et cetera. So that's sort of allied health, but then also introducing people then to sport um, and that community participation. So it's really those three prongs is what we focus on is sort of the therapy, the participation in sport, 
and also that community engagement that people get through interacting with that sort of broader community um, of others that are like them and often going through the similar challenges to themselves. In the next slide. Um, so this is really how we look at it, whereas we have, you know, um, improved function, functional improvement and rehabilitation sort of is at that core. Then we look at offering community participation in sport um, to connect with others. This is very much focused on sort of social sport, um, group sport, team sports. And then some people, if they are interested and have the ability, uh, will be identified um, and then go into more elite sporting pathways where some will you know, end up representing Australia at the Paralympics. So we really focus on all of those areas um, from that grassroots right up to those pathways where people can you know, compete for the country. Next slide. Right. So the question then is, how can NDIS support these active goals? Um, how we can utilise people's own individual NDIS plans to create those opportunities to become fit and active. The next one. So the core of this, um, as you will all know, is really about the participants' goals. Um, and if the participants' goals are clearly lined um, with sort of sport and physical activities. So some of the examples of goals that people could have which would help them uh, gain NDIS funds to support their sporting journeys are things like, you know, I want to engage recreationally in sport, or I want to engage socially with my peers and my community, so that's social participation, um, and the, the, um, the desire to connect with others can be a strong goal that will support sporting goals. Um, I want to build my capacity for my interaction with peers. I want to build my skills, um, increase my independence, or continue to develop my social and communication skills. Or I want to participate, or I want to continue to participate in social and different sporting activities. So if people have goals like that, then um, we can look at then, you know, trying to tailor some NDIS funding to support uh, people to create opportunities for them to play sport. So often people, there's often a confusion of whether NDIS will pay for sport, um, but they will if it's about their social and recreational support. So generally NDIS can be claimed under these two areas. So either capacity building for community participation activities, or also under their core funding, under community social recreational activities, or group and centre based activities. Go to the next slide. Um, so NDIS funds can be used for social and community sports. They can also be used for training for instructors or coaches. They can also be used to help short-term support to build skills. They can be used to fund a support worker or transport, personal care, um, assistive technology or special equipment such as sports wheelchairs. And also it can be used to help with equipment modifications. But again, these have to be really clearly related to a person's goals. So it's really dependent on the goals and whether these are consistent with what people are trying to achieve in their NDIS goals. What NDIS can't be used for or funded though, includes gym or sports club memberships, um, standard equipment, uniforms or clothing, uh, entry and registration fees, um, or participation in activities at a professional or an elite level. So really the NDIS funding is more focused on that sort of community participation and group participation at that community level. Um, sporting wheelies can also assist in helping people um, support their NDIS plans um, by writers, writing letters of support to support those. The next slide. Um, so as part of this of what we're trying to achieve is we're looking at building Australia's first para clubhouse. So this is a new centre um, that we're building at the moment. So it's under, currently under construction um, in the centre of Brisbane. And this is really a, a sort of a game changer for people with a disability to again create these opportunities for pathways, particularly for community interaction. So this centre will build uh, 
bring together uh, world-class rehabilitation, um, allied health, um, support services as well, um, but also there will be the sports there as well. So as you can sort of see in the picture there, see in the background, we've got you know, the gym and the rehabilitation services, but we also, that then flows onto um, the sports courts. So we're going to have um, the potential to play wheelchair uh, basketball there, wheelchair rugby, um, power football, goalball, um, a boccia, a variety of different sports. And the idea is that this will bring the community together because people will be able to see you know, what they can do. And again, it's helping to break down those barriers. Um, at the moment, sport's very fragmented, um, particularly Paralympic sport. Uh, and the idea of this para clubhouse is to bring all of these sports together um, to create potential or opportunities for people to play different sports, but also the potential for people to see different sports. And the idea that, you know, if you don't see it, you don't know what opportunities are available. So this, the uh, para clubhouse will bring all of this together so people can get their rehab, but they can also play sport. Um, and in stage two, we're going to implement a, a cafe. So the idea that, again, it can become this really social hub for people sort of to connect, hang out and learn from each other. So the real focus is on getting active and healthy, but very much on that sort of community support. Um, and for example, I was speaking to um, a Paralympian this morning. He said that he wished that we had something like this when he first got out of hospital so that he could see this sort of pathway. He said it was really difficult after he was injured um, to know, you know, where to go to or what options. You know, he, he hadn't known anyone uh, with a disability before he himself got injured. Um, and he said, you know, when he started initially to connect with sport, he started then to be able, I suppose it just helped him accept his disability, but also to learn how to live with his disability um, and to get tips and hints and see how other people were living with, you know, a similar condition to himself. Um, and that really helped his rehabilitation, um, it helped him sort of connect with other people and um, showed him you know, how he could live his, his life now with, with a spinal cord injury in his case. Yeah. Um, so that's really the focus of this para clubhouse is that it brings all of these factors together so people can create you know, opportunities, um, this, you know, through re rehabilitation to improve their, um, their physical ability, um, to connect with others, to sort of help that social connection um, and then really provide that sort of community um, where it's, you know, other people as well and that real peer support through that clubhouse. The next slide, right there. Yeah, so that's really the main um, things that we wanted to talk today about, that, that sport really is so important for creating those sort of community connections. Um, it, we really want to try and encourage as many people as possible to try sport and try different um, activities. Um, and then, and the NDIS is available there to support people um, to be able to participate and join sort of social sports programs. Will we get a questions, Rob? Yes, thank you so much uh, for doing that presentation, Lisa. I really, really That's appreciate okay. that. I saw a few questions come through. Uh, I may just ask, I've got a couple of colleagues on the call that I know we're monitoring the chat. Are you able to come off and maybe just ask, uh, relay a couple of the questions that we got? Hi, yeah, sure, I can. Um, so we've got a few questions. So um, the first one we got, um, is is there a contact in Victoria? Um, was that for Sporting Wheelies or my Integra? Yeah, I assume, well, a, a couple of things I would say. One, um, we will send out contact details, certainly for, uh, for my Integra. Yeah, so and, well, for everyone on the call, we've got contact details here, but uh, yeah. in terms of my Integra, we have um, engagement representatives throughout the country and we'll include contacts for all of those as your local contacts. I assume this question is potentially asking more, is there something similar to this in Victoria? And I don't know, Lisa or Jack, if you know of a contact or contacts in other states that do similar work to what uh, sporting wheelies do in other states. 
Yeah, uh, with that, yeah, there, there's no one that does exactly the same as we do, particularly as far as the rehabilitation and the sport together. Um, but that being said, in, say, Victoria, New South Wales and WA, there are different individual state sporting organisations for the different sports. So often they're a little bit different, for example, um, in, say, New South Wales, so um, Botcher is run by a different organisation that runs, say, wheelchair rugby or, or wheelchair basketball, um, but there definitely are sporting organisations in each of those states that do cover all of those sports. Great. And what we'll do is uh, work with you after this to kind of just maybe get a list of some of those top ones in each of the states. Um, so we'll include that in the follow up so that uh, for all of you on here that aren't in Queensland or after similar contacts in other states, we'll include links to similar organisations for you. Uh, cool. uh, yep. And then the next one, um, could you please provide some examples of social and community sports that the NDIS will fund? Yeah. Jack, do you want to talk to that? Yeah, sure. Um, so any sport that is inclusive and provides, I guess, a mo an environment that is inclusive of people with disability and um, can address those some of those examples of goals that Lisa, um, Lisa mentioned in the presentation, would be able to use their NDIS funding to claim that expense so we obviously run the five paralympic sports um, of wheelchair rugby boccia wheelchair basketball powerlifting and goalball so all our we're and we're a registered ngis provider obviously so all those sports um we can people can, can claim the cost of that through their ndis plan if their goals relate to participation in those in social sport programs so i guess it comes down to um, you can participate. You've got to have that conversation, I guess, with the sport that you're looking to play. If it's athletics, for example, the athletics club may not be an NDIS provider. However, you can still use your NDIS funds to, to contribute towards the cost of, say, that modified athletics program or that support that you're going to have through that athletics program. And it's really sometimes a conversation around with your plan manager as well. It's a bit easier if you're self-managed. But again, it's always got to align to those goals um, and be able, you know, be able to justify that expense through through the NDIS. But um, definitely, it doesn't have to be an NDIS provider. The club does not have to be an NDIS provider. However, if it is um, a sport similar to the ones that we run, that are Paralympic sports, then it's much easier to claim those costs through your plan. So, um, yeah, obviously, if you have a plan manager or self-managed, having access to those unregistered providers is one of those benefits, right? So I think that's why we see so many people take up um, self-management and plan management as an option. Just one of many examples why. Exactly. Um, uh, Greta, do we have any more questions? Um, yes, got a couple more. Um, does Sporting Wheelers support mental health participants? Yeah, absolutely. As Lisa mentioned, we um, cater for over 65 different types of disabilities, and that includes people with, and the name is a little bit confusing, um, but includes obviously people with an intellectual impairment, mental health condition. Um, you know, we, we support everyone. Um, and then you said um, you had one more? Yeah, so that was oh, similar. It was about the um, state contacts, uh, similar supports in New South Wales. So I think we touched on um, yeah. getting that information out there a bit yeah. before, but it doesn't look like there's too many more. Okay, yeah. cool. All right. Well, it seems like we've answered all the questions. Yeah. If there are Actually, any Can others... I just address, sorry, there's just a question please, there please. from Emma Sport. Emma Smith, sorry, saying that NDIA will fund an EP, but not the activity. Jack, do you want to just talk about how it will um, fund those sporting activities? Yeah, so you're right, it does fund uh, exercise physiology, obviously, um, but we also can use NDIS funds. And this is this is a little bit confusing and it's been one of our challenges is to get this message across um, that people can use their NDIS plan to fund sports, social sports participation. Um, and there's obviously, can, you know, we, we provide qualified coaches who have to do, you know, a quite a lot of training. They have to be skilled in working with people with disability. And we go through, you know, the NDIA audit and things like that to make sure that we're, you know, staying on top of all, all the requirements to be a provider. So um, you definitely can use your NDIS money to, to do social and community sport. 
Yeah, and then in, in terms of how you claim that through Proda, that really depends on how the person's plan is set up, Emma. Um, so obviously, if they're the plan manager, like my Integra, then it would be our responsibility to do that on behalf of the participant. Um, but more than happy to speak with you after this call if you have any specific questions around that and um, work with you on that specific example that you may have. Uh, thank you for pointing that one out though, Lisa, I missed that question. Fantastic. OK, well, if there are no other questions in the chat, uh, feel free to put any more in. Oh, yeah, no, just asking for more questions. That's fine. No more questions for now. If you do have any more, please put them in or um, we will pick them up afterwards as well and include a follow up to them. Um, Jack or Lisa, is there anything else you kind of wanted to say as a bit of a closing remark or um, any other bits that you wanted to include that you may have missed up to this point? Uh, everything. Yeah, no, I was about to say, like, if anyone's got any questions with that, they're free to um to ring us. Um, we are obviously a Queensland organisation, so um, if anyone's got you know from Queensland, um, we'll obviously put you in touch with um interstate if you're an interstate person. But if you just want to talk to us, particularly if you've got a um, a client and you're not sure what um what or how we could help them or what they might actually need, um, or what they might be able to benefit from, um, we're more than happy to talk to people, you know, about specific examples and and what options we've got uh, for particular people um, and also children as well. So we should probably mention that as well, that we're just about to start a um, what we're calling Para Squad, which is a multi-sport program specifically aimed at kids and trying to get kids as fit and active um, and also to connect with their peers as well. So there's sort of a lot of different programs that we offer. We also offer, you know, group um, group training as well. So more sort of fitness training as well as the sports. So it really just depends on your individual client and what their needs are. Um, but we're more than happy to sort of work with you and find what really might suit that individual the best. Thank you. I think that's a really kind offer. Um, and to anybody who's kind of joined the call or joined the meeting late, uh, so a few people kind of coming in, uh, just let you know we're recording the session and we're going to uh, send that out to everybody afterwards. So if you feel like you've missed anything, you will get the, the recording afterwards, including links to questions and stuff. So you should get all that contact from there. Um, so I make that about half past. I think the only other thing I wanted to sign off in saying was, um, like I mentioned before, um, I'm part of my Integris engagement team. We have local representatives in each state, so we'll include those contact details for you as well in follow up activities. Um, so you have the, their details as a as a touch point for you individually as a support coordinator or an LAC or an EGI. Um, and just to thank Lisa and Jack again for coming on today. The aim of today is to do a really kind of short, sharp, informative session, not to take too much of everybody's valuable time, but like a nice quick half hour slot, uh, which I think we've done quite well at. So thank you, everybody. Um, any other questions, please send them through and we'll make sure that we include them in the follow up materials. Otherwise, please keep your eye out for future webinars. If you have any other ideas for other content you'd like to see, then please send that through as well. And we'll make sure to try and do our best to address that as much as possible. We want to make sure that we're giving a range of interesting content. Uh, we thought sports was like a really interesting area, and I hope you found that to be the case as well. So I certainly have personally learned a lot. So thank you again, Lisa and Jackie. And Jack. Thank you. Thank you. OK, no problem. Thank you, everybody, for coming. I'll end it there and we'll send out the follow up information from there. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.